Yeah, okay. This is what I was thinking. I wanted to set a trap. I wanted to set it while we were in that little basement thing, but it wasn't letting me. I pulled out the spool of wire. Unraveling a bit, I watched the light glint off of it. It's strong and hard to see. The idea for a trap quickly took shape in my mind. The door frame is metal. I crouched down to take a look. Screws. Ah! I pulled out the office key and used it to loosen the screws on either side of the door frame. Now I have something to tie the wire to. I twisted the wire around one protruding screw, then the other. I bent the wire back and forth and used the key to cut it off. I was sweating from the effort by the time I finished. But this looks like a really good trap. The wire, only inches off the floor across the doorway, was tough to spot. There's no way she'd notice it while she tried to enter the room. She'll trip for sure. And when she does, I chewed my lip. Well, one step at a time. Okay. So we have the batteries for the taser. We set our trap. probably just sleep okay here she comes it was like being on autopilot I held my breath trying to listen through the pounding heartbeat of my ears the click of the knob turning haha <laughs> look at you in such a compromising position she crashed ungracefully to the floor she didn't manage to break her fall at all <gasps> do you see what I see she was groaning in pain, but my focus was on the shining rectangle that slipped from her pocket. Beside her sprawled body was a card key. For a split second I stood there, she was stunned into silence. Let's attack her ass. I didn't think. I just moved. I jumped onto her back and pulled out the wire spool. Wait! I saw the flecks of blood on the floor in front of her face. I pulled a length of cord and yanked it up under her neck. I felt her entire body stiffen under me with panic. She scrambled desperately as I pushed my knee into her back and pulled harder on the wire. I think she was trying to scream. I pulled so hard that the wire was cutting into the flesh of my hands. I didn't care. She thrashed under me like an animal. She didn't seem to make any sound. I could see blood on her neck and her fingers as she tried to pull the wire away. The only sound was the dull thudding from her writhing and my hoarse breathing. I felt like I was an animal too. I used all of my strength, fueled by my own fear and panic. The wire was cutting into both of us. The thudding became quieter and the struggle became easier, but I didn't ease up. I pulled the wire as her resistance waned, through her fingers and into her vulnerable neck. I kept pulling. Blood dripped down from my hands. Soon, she wasn't moving anymore. Only my panting was left in the room. Still, I kept the wire tight. I stayed there for long minutes after she stopped moving. I had to be sure. I don't know how long I stayed like that. It caught my eye and brought me back into time. I let out a ragged breath and let go of the wire. I grimaced as I realized the wire wouldn't fall. Ew! I pulled it out of my flesh. It didn't seem to hurt. I looked past my bleeding hands. She's dead. I stumbled backward off of her. She's dead. I shakily got to my feet after a couple of failed tries. God, I killed her. I killed her. There's blood everywhere. The card. I spotted the white card that fell from her pocket. I snatched it off the ground and held it. My hand smeared red all over it. I closed my eyes for a moment and then began to move. I walked through the hallway to the elevator. I carefully slipped the card into the key slot. The light turned green. I slowly pushed the button for the ground floor. The doors closed and the elevator moved. I was moving. I was leaving. A small tone sounded and I left the elevator. I walked into the dark, abandoned office building. I walked toward the light. Slowly, I pushed open one last door and I was outside. The street lights shimmered as rain fell on my face. I'm outside. The sound of the busy street was surreal. I turned and walked down the street as the blood was slowly washed from my hands. 
You killed for your freedom. Hell yeah. I think that's the fastest I have ever made it out of here alive. <laughs> I think I, we just needed one day. Just hell yeah. Of course, we need to go back and experience all of the deaths. And also, I want to see what happens if we just don't leave. Like, if we just hang out in that room until she comes back, what is she going to do? Let's see. Let's just keep drinking. I took another few swigs. The burn was strong now, and the buzz of inebriation slowed my thoughts down. Ugh. I shoved the bottle back where I found it. That's enough of that. So, <laughs> what happens now that we're drunk as shit? I entered the larger open area from the hallway. Oh, I thought something would happen. Nothing happens. Okay, well. Okay, so I haven't, I'm not even gonna bother searching. I'm not gonna bother picking anything up. We're just gonna stay here. And we're gonna stay here until Celia comes back and see what happens. Okay, so she's here. I instinctively moved back into the corner of the room. Relax. You're just keeping me company today. Come on. She turned and motioned for me to follow. Now, she disappeared outside the door. I tentatively stepped outside. A long hallway ended in what appeared to be a sort of lounge area. More cabinets and papers littered the place. Past the lounge area was a door that looked like it went to another office. However, my attention was much more focused on what appeared to be an elevator. Could that be the way out? It sure is. She collapsed onto one of the dusty lounge chairs. Ma'am. Ma'am, you cannot be acting this way. I'm supposed to try to kill you. I stood there dazed from the bizarre situation. Sit. I jumped slightly at the abrupt command. <laughs> uh... Do we sit on the floor or do we sit on a chair? I feel like she'd probably want us to sit on the floor, but let's sit on a chair. I looked around the room and chose a chair across from her. It was dusty from disuse, but more comfortable than I expected. Good. Just sit there. Oh, right. You're probably hungry by now, right? To my embarrassment, I perked up like a dog. That's what I thought. She moved her coat and rustled through a plastic bag I hadn't noticed before. Then she held two items out to me. Oh my god. A bottle of water and some kind of wrapped deli sandwich. I gingerly accepted them. Seeing the food awakened my hunger so quickly that it startled me. She seemed to sink into her chair. She looked exhausted. I mean, it takes a lot of effort to look like this, honestly. I couldn't wait any longer. I immediately opened the water and drank. I tried to eat carefully and quietly. I realized too late that she was aware I was staring at her. What does that look for? Why would you want me to relax uh, here? Isn't keeping me here more work for you? Mm. Let's, let's ask her why we're in a basement. Oh, she didn't like that. She narrowed her eyes at me. No. No, my home is filled with 20-year-old doe-eye cooks and cleaners and whatever the fuck else is not more comfortable. My disgusting piece of shit husband runs the place like he's some kind of discount Hugh Hefner. I watched her nails dig into the armrests until she suddenly let go and collapsed back into the chair. I don't even care that he fucks them. She let out half a bitter laugh. Saves me the trouble. It's their faces. Subservient, mewling sheep always looking at the floor. They're so young, but they're already broken. Someone bought their dignity and they gave it up just like that, without a fight. I mean, that's what you're wanting. It disgusts me, but like when I'm like, you can't break me, I have my dignity, she shoots me in the face, so like. I flinched as her sharp gaze flicked back to mine. I couldn't help but gulp at the parallels between her sheep and myself. Um, do I, 
disgust you? To my surprise, she let out a laugh. Oh, mouse, aren't you just precious? She never answered the question. <laughs> she closed her eyes and leaned back. I briefly looked around the room with a jolt of adrenaline. She was hardly paying attention. Don't even think about it. I froze. Can she read my mind? We're going to have a simple, relaxing evening. I'm not going to hear my husband's voice, and you're not going to give me any trouble. I slowly let the air out of my lungs. Maybe I should just enjoy the break. I returned my attention to the deli sandwich. I don't know if it was the hunger, but it tasted like the best sandwich I'd ever had. I almost began to relax when I heard the buzz of a phone. For fuck's sake! She growled as she pulled out her phone. For a split second, I felt sorry for whoever was on the other line, until I remembered my own position. No, I'm not home. I'm not at the office either. What do you want? It's none of your goddamn business, Harold. Fine. Yeah, I'll be there by seven. I flinched as she turned off the phone and fumed. Come on. She motioned for me to get up. I... I don't want to think about men for another second. I recoiled from her sudden outburst. Well, it's a good thing I'm not a man. Just follow me. I got up and followed her angry pace back to my small prison. Get in. I swear I could feel her anger and waves radiating from her body. I don't want that anger to be directed my way. I obeyed and heard the door slam behind me. I was sweating. I think I dodged a bullet. I slumped to the floor, alone again. Uh, okay, so just like before, we're just gonna hang out in the room because we know what's out there. We know we can get her, but let's see what happens. Knock, knock. I was startled awake, my heart pounding. She entered the room briskly and I realized I had flinched backwards. She definitely noticed. Ah, feeling a bit jumpy still. I suppose that's only natural. I noticed then that she was carrying a cardboard box. Well, there's no need to be so skittish. I was thinking about you all day at work today, and I decided to bring you a little treat. Aw, thanks. I flinched as she stepped closer. Here. She placed the box on my lap. There was something tense in her voice, something that made me scared to open the box. What's in the box? I looked up at her. Go on. I tentatively lifted the top. Donuts? It's just a box of donuts. And they smell good. My stomach growled. I can eat these? <gasps> so sweet. Well, of course you can, Mouse. They're for you. I trembled slightly as I took a donut from the box. And I took a bite. It's good. It tastes just like a normal donut. I began to register how hungry I was and took another bite. I almost forgot about her presence for a second before I glanced up and saw her intense stare. She was focused on me like a laser. I was too hungry to worry about being watched. I silently ate the donut and swallowed. After I finished it, I glanced up to her. I didn't tell you to stop. Oh no. I glanced back down at the box. She doesn't expect me to eat all of these, does she? I grabbed another one and started eating. How does it taste? I swallowed my current mouthful. Uh, good? Describe it. I shivered. It's sweet. The icing is smooth and the dough is really cakey and soft. I had no idea what I was doing. Hmm. I gathered a bit of courage between bites. Uh, why? Shut up and eat. I must have looked as confused as I felt because she sighed and began to answer. They were on my desk this morning. I'm sure it was that snake Jennifer. Fucking Jennifer, giving me donuts. A little fake congratulations note on it and everything. I made sure to keep eating, but I still couldn't make sense of the story. I'm not sure I, uh... Oh, ignorance really is bliss, isn't it? She sighed wistfully. 
You don't get to where I am by eating whatever you want. If you're not an old man, you've got to do a lot more than just be good at your job. That hardly counts for anything. I have to be flawless. I need to recognize sabotage for what it is. And I have to stay two steps ahead. I gulped and shakily returned my attention to the pastries. A chocolate one next. I quickly picked out a chocolate donut as instructed. She took a few deep breaths, watching me chew. Somehow, it seemed to calm her down. I kept eating the donut awkwardly as she stared. I go to the fourth donut and I began to struggle. Oof, I can't eat more than like one and a half donuts before getting super sick, so four? That's too much. I was so hungry before, but now I'm starting to feel sick. I don't think I can eat anymore. She studied me for a moment and bit her lip. One more. I breathed hard. I can do this. I slowly grabbed another donut and bit in. I struggled to keep it down. I was squirming slightly, trying to find a position that didn't hurt as much. I glanced up and saw that she seemed to be deeply enjoying the show. Obviously. I just focused on the pastry and kept eating. There's a good little mouse. I managed to stuff the last bit down and groan softly. My insides were aching, but Celia looked extremely satisfied. She walked to me and took the box. Not bad. I flinched slightly as she extended her hand. To my surprise, she just brushed a crumb off my face. I sat there stunned while my stomach lurched. I wish I could stay a little longer, but I can only afford a quick visit today. You understand, right? Ugh. I couldn't think straight. I really did feel sick. Don't laugh at me. I'll be back soon. With that, she turned around and left, closing the door behind her. I laid down and waited to feel better. Mm. Okay. Um, yeah, so let's just keep staying here. Uh-oh. I had a pounding headache. Well, where am I? I didn't recognize this room. How did I get here? Wow, it took you forever to wake up. That was supposed to be the weak dose. She got me while I was sleeping. That bitch. I tried to back away, but I couldn't. With a pang of terror, I realized I couldn't move. I looked down at my body and saw I was completely tied up with bright red rope. Well, you seem to be able to struggle at least. How do you feel? Uh, let's just be honest. Because we are not a big tough guy. We're, we're just a little, a little lad. A little sad lad. My head hurts. Everything hurts. Hmm. Knocked you out a little too hard, huh? I guess that's what I get for buying drugs from the internet, I guess. <laughs> internet drugs! You could've killed me! Hopefully you'll perk up as we get busy. She pushed me from my slump position onto my back. I couldn't do anything but fall. The intricate pattern of rope held my limbs together. I tried to push down the rising panic in my chest. When did she even drug me? When I was sleeping? Here's the thing. I had a really shitty day today. Oh! I gasped as she sat down, straddling my waist. Girl! I didn't expect her to get this close. And this is what I bought you for. I jerked against my bindings as I saw her pull out an expensive looking knife. Oh, don't worry. You don't have to do anything complicated at all this time. It'll be really easy. I'll just need you to bleed for me. I yelled in protest as she pressed the knife to the side of my face. Don't worry, that's like the one thing I'm super good at. I screamed more in fear than pain. The knife was so sharp that I didn't feel it as much as I expected to, but the panic tightening in my chest was only getting worse. See? It's not so bad. She held the knife to my face and caressed me. The blood on her fingers told me that the knife really did cut in deep despite the sensation. You should see your face right now. You're so cute. I strained against the ropes as she dipped the blade down to my collarbone and slid it through the thin layer of flesh there. I grunted and screamed. I know, I know. She pressed the knife to my arm. It's okay. You scream all you want. Oh, thank you, Celia. I tried to grit my teeth as she kept pressing the knife into my skin. She moved it so slowly, going deeper. 
I couldn't hold it in. I screamed in earnest as the knife penetrated the muscle. Please, no more. She was panting softly. She ignored my plea and just picked another place to drag the knife over. I writhed, screaming and sweating as she kept making cut after cut. I couldn't keep focus. My body and mind were on fire. What is happening? Is it the drug she used on me? But I barely noticed the thin plastic slide over my face. Until one frozen, clear moment, I saw her vicious eyes through the bag. No! I couldn't breathe in. She held the bag to my neck as I helplessly bucked. I was no longer in control of my body. I tried to thrash, to breathe, to scream. I could barely move. My vision was stained red as the bag was smeared with my blood. I tried to see her through it, the expression. Our eyes met and suddenly she let go. I gasped desperately as the bag slid off my face. She only stared at me as I coughed. Why? She cut my face gently as if she hadn't been the one just suffocating me. Don't worry, I'm not going to break you. I just wanted to see how far you'll bend. I wheezed under her. She's crazy. I tried again to focus. I think she was talking to me again, but I couldn't hear her over the static hissing in my ears. I can't. I slowly woke up groaning in pain. I must have passed out. I looked around at the familiar room. Ugh, I'm back here. Okay. Has that noise always been so loud? The mechanical hum of the lights and the drone of the ventilation system. I covered my ears. It seemed to vibrate right through my skin. I gasped in surprise when I realized I'd been digging my nails painfully into my head. My ears were ringing. I have to get out of here. Well, no. (laughs) I was startled by a low mechanical hum. After listening for a moment, I realized it must be the elevator. I moved to the corner of the room and waited. I could hear a voice. Wait, two voices? They sounded angry, shouting. One was definitely Celia, but the other sounded like a man. I flinched back as they got closer. Howard, the door flew open and a man barged in. What the, and what the hell is this? I couldn't seem to react fast enough as Celia pushed past him and grabbed me. While I was just barely registering the man in the doorway, I felt the blade of a knife press threateningly against my neck. Not another step, Harold. I think I'm just gonna shut the fuck up. I didn't dare make another sound. I could feel the knife shaking against my skin. Her body was pressed against my back. I could feel her breathing. She pointed the knife out toward Harold. You stupid bastard, you ruin everything. Oh, I ruin everything? I give you all the freedom and time in the world to do whatever you want. And you fuck around in some condemned asbestos trap with some kind of homeless person? (laughs) Excuse you, I am very rich. And, and what? Kidnapping, I guess? Shut up. He ignored her completely. What if someone found this? What if the media found this? Take another step and I'll kill her. Celia, please. Do you really think I care if you get your blouse dirty? Thanks, Harold. My blood ran cold as I watched him take a step forward. He's not bluffing. You're going to clean this shit up and we're going to go home. The knife wasn't pressed against my throat anymore, but she was clutching me close. Get out of the way, Celia. She was trembling. Then she let me go and stepped away. I'm tired of cleaning up your messes. Oh, is she gonna let Harold kill me? What? Dang it, I really thought we were, Dang it, okay, hold on. So I'm gonna see if there's any dialogue changes that I could do to maybe not let her kill me. You might want to think twice before you convince me how difficult you are to keep. If the pleasure of your company can't outweigh your inconvenience, 
I just have to put you down. She closed her eyes and leaned back. I briefly looked around the room with a jolt of adrenaline. Oh, I already did all that. Shut up and follow me. I got up and followed her angry pace. Yeah, we already did all that. Okay, that didn't change anything. So this time I'm just not going to say anything to her. She doesn't seem like she wants me to talk. <laughs> I stayed quiet and stopped struggling. Can't work your mouth yet, hmm? That's okay. We'll get it moving again. Uh, okay. I don't think this is going to change anything. But we'll see if maybe we can talk to Harold. Be like, please help me. I don't think he's going to. I don't think he's going to give a shit. But we can at least try. Help! I strained against her, the panic outweighing the pain of the knife cutting into my skin. She'll kill me! The blade thrust up under my chin as the other hand clamped on my mouth, smothering my scream. Shut up! And you! She pointed the knife out to Harold. You stupid bastard, you ruin everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nope, he still killed me. Okay, so obviously staying here, it, we're just going to die. So I'm going to try to leave the room. We're looking pretty decent. See if there's anything new that I can find out in the office area. Okay, so I've already ate the donuts. I got tortured. I was trying to get the wire and the taser at the same time, but you don't have enough to do both. So I got the wire this time because I feel like... I'm not going to be able to fight Harold and Celia with just the taser, so let's see. Something woke me up. I lifted myself up and listened. A mechanical hum. The elevator. Uh-oh, here they come. I watched stunned as the door flew open and a large man tripped on the wire I set for Celia. Sup, bitch? He smashed into the floor with a loud thud. I looked up and saw Celia behind him, for a moment just as stunned as I was. She took a step back into the doorway. There's no way past her. I had to think fast. I leapt on top of the man and pulled out the rest of my wire. I wrapped it around his neck and turned back to her. What is this? A hostage. A gift. I mean, she does fucking hate him, so... What if I'm just like... I mean, maybe she'd care. Let's say he's a hostage. Don't come any closer or I'll kill him. Just let me go. Like, I don't know if they sign like a prenup or something. She stared incredulously for a moment before cracking into a laugh. You think I'm worried about Harold? Please, by all means, do kill him. You bitch. The man bucked under me. I tightened the wire in response. What am I doing? He began to thrash in panic and making gurgling noises. I look back at her. Hmm. I feel like if I spare him, I'm just gonna die. But like, I could just get the death real quick and then come back to this, so that's probably what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I can't do this. I don't know what I'm doing. I dropped the spool of wire and tried to scramble off the man's back. Pain shot through my body. My back. She was behind me and the blade of a knife was buried between my shoulders. Sorry, mouse. I lurched forward as she slid the knife out of my flesh. I coughed and tasted blood filling my mouth. He called the police. I wavered as I saw her grasp his hair and pull up his head. He screamed defiantly as she quickly slit his throat. She unceremoniously dropped his head back onto the floor. I couldn't make sense of anything. What was happening? Blood was spreading on the floor. I coughed and more warm liquid filled my mouth. I collapsed next to the dying man. I can't stay here anymore. I tried to talk, tried to do anything. I couldn't move. Only more blood came from my throat. I could feel her hand on my back. For what it's worth, it was fun while it lasted. Okay, so let's figure out what happens if we actually kill him. <laughs> okay, so this time we're gonna um, murder his face off. Or I guess his head off. I don't have time to think about this. I kept the wire tight, even as it dug into my hands. I don't even know who he is. I can't think. My head is pounding. 
Blood ran down my hands as the struggling began to weaken. I kept looking back at her, but her expression was unreadable. She just watched. My hands began to shake as I felt his body twitch under me. I felt nauseous. What am I doing? He slumped to the floor. What have I done? I could feel tears pricking my eyes. I began to turn back to her. Pain shot through my body. Ah, she kills me either way. Son of a bitch. Ugh. Okay, well, I guess this time we'll tell her that he's a gift. And then be like, man, you want to you wanna torture him instead? All you have to do is let me go. Okay, so this time, he's a gift. Here you go, Celia. I'll kill him for you. I look back to her. I don't even know who he is. The man bucked under me. I tightened the wire in response. What am I doing? Okay, so... Oh, she just says, do it. Her command rang through me. I ran on instinct. Yes, ma'am. I pulled on the wire until my hands bled. He's trying to scream, but he couldn't. He was big, but he wasn't flexible. The wire was digging into his throat, and he couldn't do anything to shake me off his back. I could feel her watching me. My hands were steady. It seemed easier with someone commanding me. I was just following an order. His struggling grew weaker, but I kept the wire tight. After a while, he was only twitching under me. I couldn't feel my fingers. He slumped to the floor. I began to turn back to her. Damn it! She stabs me either way. I'm sorry, Cece. I lurched forward from the pain. Well, she used my actual name this time. <laughs> I know. I coughed and tasted blood. Uh... She hugs me. I could feel her arms around me. For what it's worth, it was fun while it lasted. Fuck off. God dang it. <sighs> hmm. So, there's something we're missing. There's something we're missing, but I'll figure it out. Okay, so I went back to the very beginning, and we're still chained to the desk at this point, but I went into my actions, and I saw that you could struggle, so I did that twice, and this is the third time that I have selected struggle. I took in several deep breaths. This is going to hurt. I wrenched against the cuffs again. The cuffs cut deep into my skin, pulling it back. Ugh. I put in all of my strength. I heard a loud crack and fell backwards. The desk fell backwards on top of me. <laughs> I scrambled to get out from under it and see what I'd done. The cuffs fell to my sides as I looked at the damage. The feet of the desk were indeed bolted to the floor, and they still were. The desk itself snapped off from the legs. I breathed a sigh of relief that turned into a hiss of pain. I really mangled my wrists but now at least I'm free. The faint hum of the lights was interrupted by the light tapping of someone approaching the door. Uh-oh. A second later, she entered the room. She stopped dead, seeing the overturned desk. She quickly focused on me and my obvious lack of restraints. Um, uh, yeah, let's fight her. This is my chance. I lunged at her, swinging the long chain still attached to my wrist. Then I fell to the ground, screaming. Explosive pain was radiating from two needles lodged in my torso. Nice try, little mouse. She moved behind my writhing form and replaced my cuffs with a smaller set. If you think you can pull one over me that easily, well, she shoved me lightly with her foot. I suppose you'll get the idea soon enough. You should hope you're a fast learner. She straightened her clothing, satisfied with my defeated state. Oh, man. Okay, so nothing changed. I tried to open the door. The handle wouldn't turn. It clacked as I tried pulling it harder, hoping that maybe it was just stuck. It's definitely locked. I examined the handle. It has one of those tiny holes in it to unlock in emergencies, but I have nothing small enough to fit in there. I looked through the blurry glass, trying to see outside my prison. Then I tapped the glass. I looked back behind me at the metal cabinets. I could probably break this glass. Smash it. I grabbed the smallest metal filing cabinet. Ugh, it's still heavy. I stood away from the window, readying myself. Then I ran at the window and hurled the cabinet at the glass. It was jarring to suddenly hear something so loud. 
Once I gathered myself, I checked the door. Sure enough, the glass was completely shattered. I carefully peered through the open window into the hallway beyond. This is definitely some kind of abandoned office building. I reached through the open hole to the handle on the other side. I sighed with relief when I felt a simple turning lock. I flipped it and opened the door with a soft creak. Then I walked into the hallway. Okay. So... Oh, I took too long. I had to go back and get the key to the office because I forgot it and she's already back. Oh. Hey, Celia. Uh, she shot me. Worthless? Mm. Mason would disagree with you. Worth full. So something interesting, we have the cuffs in our inventory. I wonder if there's a way we can use them against her. Like maybe if we have the taser. Cause like we end up getting her onto the ground and the gun is kicked away. So I wonder if we like managed to get the handcuffs on her that would give us enough time to get the gun and then get out of here. So I'm gonna try. Oh, I did not have enough time to get the batteries. Shoot. She flew around the corner into the room, fuming. What did you do to the door? Before I could say anything, I was staring down the barrel of her gun. So, I tried to step back as she approached. You're a shit disturber, huh? What? She moved quickly with smooth strides, closing the distance between us. With the gun pointed directly at my face, I was frozen up. I had fallen to my knees in shock. Am I alive? She didn't shoot me? I had just barely begun to realize that she took the shot right beside my head to stun me. My body seized up as my back was tased. I fell to the floor. I could just barely hear her voice. Motherfuckers. They said you were docile. Sell me a defective. I groaned as I felt the floor move under me. Still with me? A sharp kick to the side brought me coughing back into full consciousness. I'm not done with you. You might be garbage, but I'm going to get my money's worth one way or another. Something pressed my head to the floor. A broken glass from the door dug in my face. You're going to eat your mistake. What? Oh no. I realized it was her foot on my head as it pushed again. You heard me. The glass? I can't. She let out an exasperated sigh. You can, and you will. The taser jabbed into the back of my neck again. I couldn't feel anything for a moment. I couldn't think straight. A sharp pain in my throat brought me back once more. Slowly, I became more aware of shards of glass being shoved into my mouth. Adrenaline surged and I tried to scream. The motion just constricted my throat around the shards. Blood sprayed from my mouth as I tried to spit out the glass. I couldn't move my arms. Her hand shoved more glass at my face. I jerked away and kept trying to cough or spit it out. More blood. You're making a mess. I tried to beg, but everything just caused more damage. More blood. The pain was too much. Nothing in my body seemed to work from the shock. I began to choke on blood and shard. Aw, having trouble breathing. Fuck off. Every time I tried to take a breath in, more blood and pain filled my chest. I have to admit, you were pretty cute, though. I can't breathe. The pain finally began to subside as I felt my body twitching. I never heard her walk away. Well, fuck. <laughs> okay, so before, like the first time I came into the elevator, I was wondering what would happen if you just kind of stayed in it and waited for Celia. So I went and I got the taser and the batteries. We have a working operating taser. So if we could like maybe surprise her in the elevator, cause she has to use it to come down here. So let's see if there's a way that we can maybe like spring attack and then get out of here. I was startled by the sound of a mechanical ding. 
Before I could react, the elevator began to move. What the hell? I watched the numbers light up. My heart pounded as I saw the display light up for the ground floor. In the single second between the chime and the doors opening, my mind raced. The doors slid open and all my hope drained out. We stood motionless, facing each other for a single moment that seemed to stretch. Damn it! See, we should have had the taser out. I fell back onto the elevator floor. I gasped fruitlessly for air. What did you think you were doing? How did you even get out of that room? My mouth moved, trying to form a response. I coughed and blood filled my throat. I guess it doesn't matter anymore. Her voice was sounding far away. I could tell now that I was passing out. You've been a pain from the start. I guess it's time to put you down and start over. I felt a sharp metal against my throat. I couldn't scream as it separated my flesh. I could only lie there as my own warm blood pooled around my face. Super duper. So, so far I've just been a super huge dick to Celia to see if that changes anything. Um, so she came in. So this is when she's supposed to bring the box of donuts. But she didn't bring donuts. <laughs> she looked me over and seemed to relax a little. What? She turned back to the door. Wait. My head and stomach were both aching. I'm hungry. I don't really think you've earned anything yet. Maybe next time I'll bring you something. Before I could protest, she turned and walked away. The door clicked behind her and I slumped against the wall. Fuck. I thought I could hear her outside the room for the next couple hours. But after that, only the awful hum of the lights remained. What was that? I whipped my head and looked behind me. What? There's nothing behind me. I thought I heard... I couldn't stop the chill that crawled up the skin on my back. I jumped and spun again. That feeling when someone is right next to your ear? My heart was pounding. I was panting. Who's there? My own hoarse voice sounded alien to me. I looked down at my shaking hands. Why am I shouting? There's nothing here. I fought back the urge to cry. I can't do this anymore. So our sanity's pretty low. I'm gonna see if we can get it lower though. Still being a dick to Celia because it gets our sanity down pretty fast and typically weird things happen when our sanity's low. She brought in the box of donuts and I'm on the fourth one, trying to eat it, cannot do it. So she beats me. <laughs> Before I could react, the side of her gun was colliding with my face. I fell onto the dirty floor with the rest of the donuts scattering around me. Is it too much? Her mocking tone of voice suggested she wasn't waiting for an answer. I groaned in pain and clutched at my stomach. She knelt down to grab the back of my head and slammed it down onto one of the donuts in the floor. I coughed and tried to breathe. She slammed my face down one more time before standing up. I gasped as I rolled to my side and choked back a sob. It felt like I was going to explode. What a mess. I couldn't tell if she meant me or the donuts. She nudged my body with her foot. You're really not useful for anything, are you? I came up here with the easiest job in the world and you still fucked it up. I cried out she kicked me in the gut with no warning. I paid so much for you, too. What a ripoff. She walked over to the door. You can make it up to me next time. <laughs> she slipped out the door while I writhed. I never wanted to see another donut in my life. So we just got done being tortured. Um, sanity's at zero. <laughs> Something in me seemed to break. I began to sob uncontrollably. I couldn't stop myself. I curled into a ball and screamed. I can't take this anymore. I don't know how long I stayed that way. I couldn't move. I could hardly breathe. When I finally heard her approach me, I felt an odd sense of relief. What the hell is going on with you? Just kill me already. I completely broke down and began to sob again. I was practically screaming. I nearly choked as my body was racked with despair. I think it's time for you to go downstairs. I wasn't listening, and I didn't notice her pulling out a small syringe. This will help you feel better. But we already been downstairs. We already did that whole mess. 
What is this? I can't talk. The pain in my head. My mouth. I open my mouth and a shaking finger confirm my fear. Blood. My tongue. She cut our tongue out. Oh my God. Tears rolled down my aching cheeks. I tried to move. I couldn't stand. With a wave of dread, I realized that a metal cage surrounded me. Beyond my cage was a tarp and bloodstains. A terrible chill ran down my spine. This is not a good place to be. I tried to move to get a better look, but a jolt of pain from my ankles distracted me. I inspected the sore area and balked. My mutilated mouth could only express my terror with a muffled moan. Crude stitches held a gash on the back of each of my ankles closed. I tried to move my feet and began to panic when I couldn't. She cut something. I couldn't move my feet. Oh God, I can't walk. I let out the closest thing to a scream I could. The panic exploded and I grabbed the bars of the cage. I pulled and cried in anguish. They didn't budge at all. The sound of slow footsteps on the nearby stairs told me I had alerted my captor. She sauntered to my cage and smiled down at me. Sorry, honey, but bad little mice get the snip. She let out a quiet, cruel laugh. I suppose it was irresponsible to leave you loose. I should have kept a better eye on you, but that won't be a problem anymore. From now on, you can stay down here. She took time to look over my body. She seemed satisfied with her work. I moaned in protest and rattled the cage. Oh, careful now. Your stitches need to heal up. I looked down. How could anyone do this? I know you're upset now, but I'm sure you'll adjust. Every minute of every single day, you'll be in there waiting for me. She paused, looking me over again. Eventually, you'll learn to appreciate it. You'll beg for me, and I'll take good care of you. Fuck. The days went by and all her words came true. Sometimes she came with food and supplies, and sometimes she came with blades and a cruel smile. But just like she promised, I began to beg for her. As days stretched into weeks, the loneliness became maddening. Even when she tortured me, I craved her attention. She was the only living thing in the dead world of my metal cage. I became an animal for her. In that dark, deep basement, nothing else mattered. I forgot about the rest of the world. I would never see it again. <laughs> I mean, we lived, but God damn, that was dark as shit. Oh my god. Fuck. Well, let's try for a different ending than that, because that was bullshit. Okay, so I took a different tact this time. Instead of being a dick to her and getting my tongue cut out, I was super, super nice to her. So there were two options when it came to Harold. You could either say he's a hostage and that you're going to kill him, or you can tell her, hey, I can kill him for you, hint, hint, it's fine. Um, both ended up in the same way, which was kind of confusing to me because it's like, why have two different options for the same ending? So I'm wondering if the that ending is sanity-based. Um, because there's a lot of endings in the different um, characters where you have to have low sanity in order to achieve it. So the last thing I'm going to do, um, I don't know if you remember, but drinking the alcohol gives you sanity, but then if you drink even more of it, it takes a lot of your sanity away. So our sanity, I feel like it's pretty low. So we're gonna go set our trap for her and Harold and see if that makes any kind of difference um, for when they come in. A gift for you, madam. Oh, okay. So, he died. I turned back to look at her. She was shaking? Celia? You did it. He's actually dead. I felt dizzy. What now? The police are already coming. If you're still here, you can't stay. 
She extended her hand. I pulled a bloody wire from my hands and I shakily reached out for her. She pulled me onto my unsteady feet. We killed him together. She was breathing hard. She pulled me along by the hand like a child. We have to go. We reached the elevator and I watched her use a key card. I'm actually leaving this building. It seems so surreal to be walking through the ground floor with her. I could see the street lights outside through the windows. She let go of my hand and looked me in the eyes. I can't stay here. They're going to find out what happened, so I need to disappear. I watched her face as she battled with some internal decision. By the time they find out it was me, I'll be long gone. You have to get out of here. No one will ever know you were involved. Uh, so we can go with her, I guess? Okay, I'm going to do run, and then I'll come back and do the other ending, just so we can get both. I wasn't going to think twice. I nodded once and pushed the office building's door open. I ran out into the street filled with street noise and rain. I kept running for as long as I could, and I never looked back. You were released! woo -hoo! Okay, so let's see what happens if we tell her we're gonna stay. We'll stay with you, Celia. I want to stay with you. She stiffened in shock. What? You, well, you have money, right? We could run together. We could start over together. I thought I could see an extra shine in her eye through her confusion. But what about... I don't want to go back to my old life. Please let me come with you. This makes no sense. This is insane. Yes. I'm the one that killed him. We both have to run. We can figure out the rest later. I bit my lip and reached out. Will you please be my killer girlfriend? I held her hand in my own, ignoring the cuts from the wire. She looked down at the blood between our fingers. Okay. We'll run. Wild. Absolutely wild. <laughs> Look at that. I got a cute little girlfriend who likes to um, cut me and force me to eat donuts until I'm sick. So if that's not the ultimate goal in life, then I don't want to know what it is because this is it for me. <laughs> Feel your rage across the room 